action. Parker. Parker. Shit. Parker, what's happening down there? Uh, we're working hard down here, real hard work. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, you ought to try it sometime. Yeah, listen, I've got the toughest job on this ship. I've got to listen to your bullshit. Listen, get off my back, will you? Oh, I'll get off your back as soon as 12 module is fixed. We're working on it. I only got two hands. Well, put down your beer can and use both of them. Maybe then you'd get it done. How can you leave a decision like that to Ash? Listen, I just fly this thing. Anything that has to do with science division, Ash has the last word. Yeah, how the hell does that happen? It happens all the time. Directions from the company. Since when is that standard procedure? Standard procedure is you do what they tell you to do. Besides, I don't know nothing about science, but I do know about flying. Did you ship out with Ash before? Nope. First time. I did five hauls with a science man before, but a couple of days before we took off, they replaced him with Ash. <laughs> eh, so what? They replaced my warrant officer with you. I don't trust him. I don't trust anybody. What's happening with those repairs? They'll be finished in about an hour. Look, I, uh, I need some relief. Why'd you wait until now? You keep staring out at that thing long enough, they'll be peeling you off the walls. I've seen it happen. Ripley, we're the new pioneers. We even get to have our own special diseases. I'm tired of talking. Kill me. What did it do? That was Brett. It ate Lambert. We'll get you out of here. I'll get you up to the auto dock.
Sigourney Weaver, um, I'd had recommended uh, when we were doing casting session in New York, and um, I think on meeting her immediately as she walked into the room, uh, it became clear that this this uh, lady could be it. The studio at that particular point were obviously a little nervous. Well, it's not a high-budget movie. At that point, it's about 8.6 million. So even in those days, it wasn't particularly high. Um, a little nervous about a first-timer and still regarded me as a newcomer, even though I'd done The Duelists. So the final discussion was about, should we test? And uh, this is what you see right now. This is a test um, that we did. Uh, with a few little settlers that I uh, managed to get Roger Christian to actually cobble together so we can actually, um, you know, make the test look as good as possible. I don't believe in tests against blue backdrops. I believe in giving the actors a little taste of the environment they're going to be in. Anything you can do to help the actor to feel, you know, that uh, what the film is going to be about or how to feel how the film is going to be. The ambiance is always very important. There was a lot of it, discussion about what are we going to do with the hair, and I said, leave it alone. Don't muck about, don't start cutting the hair up. I, I try to tend to find that when they walk through the door in a casting session, I'm, you know, the final, the bottom line is always uh, how good are they at what they are going to do. I mean, as an actor, as a performer. <clears throat> but, um, the you know, we are dealing with movies, and the thing that I'm always interested in when they walk through that door is the physical, is the physical appearance or power or weight. Some have it, some don't. Whether or not you can learn to have that, I'm not really sure. I think very often an actor who's simply great actor, you know, to a certain extent, it doesn't really matter how much, how they look. Um, that becomes their power, is their intellectual and acting capability. And so somehow there's something um, attractive about that. Um, if they have everything, then that's how you get a big star. This was all playing into a gal who hadn't been really in front of a camera. Um, so it's not just about how she looks. I knew how she looked. I mean, I'd done, I think, about 1,700 commercials in my career at this point, including a lot of cosmetic commercials. So I, I could tell how she was going to be just by seeing her walk into the room. So really, this was about her acting. And that's why I wanted to feel um, secure in myself that uh, she could take all of this on board. The whole presentation of the test actually was good, but you know, the folks on the test were Sigoni and uh, she, got the, she got the job. In fact, Laddie, what he did when he saw the test was silent and then simply picked up the telephone and asked um, his secretary to send in I, I remember about half an eight, maybe a dozen women who were handy in the office uh, just to pop in. He wanted them to watch the test, so um, we ran the test again, and Laddie just simply then said, what did you think? And there was these, whatever it was, I don't know, maybe eight, 12 women who immediately, you know, jumped in. One said, well, I think she's like Jane Fonda. The other one said, well, I think she's like this, I think she's like that. And um, and what do you think of as an actor? And they all were bowled over by her. So Laddie cleverly had also just asked women's opinion of, uh, you know, a female actress. And uh, right there, she said, he said, okay. And he just walked out. <laughs> she clearly has the authority that she needs to have and um, can give any guy as good as he can give back. Uh, so she had that very nice authority apart from having all the other obvious, you know, advantages, attributes. Um, Sigoni's very smart and, um, um, you know, she was absolutely written. She was born to be Ripley.